Hi, so this is a, going to be a fairly long video on sign rule, but what I wanted to do is to give you every conceivable type of question and lots of practice that you might get with sign rule questions aimed at a ground, around about grade seven of a GCSE. Hope it's useful to you. If you're not sure, always add a comment. I'll come back to you. Look forward to seeing you inside the video. Okay, so just a quick note before we continue. If you require any additional support, please visit 3minutemaths.co.uk. You can search for any GCSE maths topic or search by grade. And if you click on any of the links, that will take you through to a particular post. So and this one is how to answer maths indices questions. There are links through to the questions, the answers, and a walkthrough video as well. You can also remain on the YouTube channel. And all of the resources are within the YouTube channel and descriptions below each of the videos. Hope that's useful to you. Okay, so in this particular video we're going to be looking at the sine rule and the first question is calculate the length LM correct to three significant figures. So in other words they're looking for this length along here which I'm going to call A. And the way I would write the sine rule is A over sine A equals B over sine b. Now what happens with a lot of these types of questions is you'll get in this particular case l, m and n. If I were you I would just overwrite it. I would say the missing side, the side that we're looking for is a. Uh, rather than n at the top here I'm going to call that a and rather than angle l I'm going to call that angle b and opposite that is going to be small case b. So therefore I can use these dimensions and plug them straight into this particular formula. So I've got a over the sine of eight. Oops, sorry, eighty-seven degrees equals b, which is six point three divided by the sine of fifty-two degrees. Now all I need to do now is just rearrange the formula and put this into my calculator. So if I make a the subject of this particular formula, I'm going to get the sine of eighty-seven multiplied by, and I'm going to use bracket 6.3 divided by the sine of 52. Now if I put that into my calculator, I'm going to get 7.9838581 and so on. Okay, now the question itself says, uh, give your answer correct to three significant figures. My third significant figure is eight. So therefore, I'm going to make that 7.98 and that centimetres to three significant figures. OK, so that's pretty much how to use the sign rule. And what we're going to be doing through the rest of this uh, worksheet is using the same formula. We might uh, look at an angle as well later on in the worksheet, but at the moment it's just going to be side. So let's move on and have a look at question number two. Please do stop the video. Have a go at this question for yourself. So A is the opposite. Uh, I'm going to just label that as A. I've already got the angle B and I know small case B. So therefore A over sine A equals B over sine B. And then I can put my letters in and my numbers. So A over sine of 34 equals 7 over the sine of 48. I'm going to multiply both sides by sine of 34. So I get A on its own is equal to sine of 34 multiplied by 7 over sine 48. Put that into your calculator and I'm going to get 5.267... Uh, 277, so to three significant figures, the length xy is going to equal 5.27 centimetres. And that would be the answer to question number two. OK, so hopefully you're getting the idea of how these things work now. It is a case really of just downloading the worksheet from the website and have a go at each of the questions for yourself. So the next one then is going to be working out the length BC. So again, I'm going to say this bottom length is A. This is going to be higher case or uh, uh, capital A. This is going to be in this case now B. This is going to be B. So therefore A over sine A. And the bit I'm looking for, I'm always going to make the subject of, of the formula. It just makes my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to get A over sine of 92 
degrees equals 9 over the sine of 42 degrees. Put that into a calculator, or rather make A the subject, it's going to be the sine of 92, and that's multiplied by 9 over sine of 42, and that's going to give me 13.4420 09, which is equal to BC, which is what I'm looking for, is equal to 13.4 metres, and that's to one decimal place, and that would be the answer to question number three. Let's move on then to question number four. Work out length PQ. Well, again, I'm going to completely ignore the P's and the Q's. I'm just going to say this is A, and therefore opposite that is capital A. I've got... Uh, capital B and lowercase b. Now the slight issue here is I need to know the value of the angle A. Okay, well there are 180 degrees in a triangle, so therefore if I add 62 plus 47 together, I'm going to get 109. If I then take away 109 from 180, which is 180 degrees in a uh, triangle, I know now that angle A is actually 71 degrees, so I can just proceed as normal. A over sine A equals B over sine B. Okay, put the uh, numbers and letters in, so A over sine of 71 equals 12 over the sine of 62. Multiply through by sine of 71, I get A equals sine 71 brackets 12 over sine of 62, close bracket. In my calculator, I'm going to get 12.85039. Go back to the question, and it asks you for two decimal places. Therefore, PQ, which is the information they're looking for, to two decimal places is going to be 12.85 centimetres. And that would be the answer to question number four. OK, so hopefully that will give you some idea with the theory of these types of questions. We need to have a look now at um, a little bit more of a sophisticated question, which has got quite a bit going on in it. And what we're being asked to do ultimately is to find out the height of the flagpole. What we're told is that um, the angle of elevation from point A to the top of the flagpole is 65 degrees, so I can put that into there. And from the top of the flagpole from point B is going to be 78 degrees. OK, well, I can use that information because if I just concentrate firstly on trying to find out this length A, I'm going to say that capital A is 65 degrees, but also it allows me now to work out, because I know some of the angles, it allows me to work out the rest of the angles of the first triangle. So I now know that this is going to be 102 degrees, and the reason that is is because uh, angles in a straight line add up to 180, so 180 take away 78 is 102. I also know that angles in a triangle also add up to 180, so I can figure out that this top one is a very small 13 degrees. Okay, so let's have a look and see what I can do with this, bearing in mind what I'm trying to do is work out side A. Okay, so I also know that uh, this top angle here, which is this 13 degrees, I'm going to call it B. So opposite that is going to be B. And we're also told that the distance is 7.8. Uh, meters. So apologies that it's getting a little bit uh, untidy on this uh, on this particular graphic, but hopefully you're able to follow this through. So let's have a look. A over sine A equals B over sine B. And I would always try to encourage you to always write the formula. It always helps just to make sure that you've got everything in your mind. So A over sine of 65 degrees is equal to B, which is going to be 7.8 divided by the sine of 13 degrees. OK, let's make A the subject of the formula. So A is going to equal sine of 65 degrees, and that's multiplied by 7.8 divided by sine of 13. So that's going to give us a value of A of 31.4. 
four two five five okay so that's in meters I believe okay so now we've got a situation where we're trying to find the height of the flagpole but we know that a is um, 31.4 meters so what we can do actually is use um, a different um, algorithm which is going to be soccer tower or a different type of formula so so ca tower and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a quick sketch so what I've been uh, able to work out is that a is 31.4255 uh, the height of the flagpole is this value of x and we know that this angle at the bottom here is 78 degrees so I'm in a great position now that I can just choose one of the ratios so if I um, write out my different sides of the triangle I know that X is going to be the opposite the longer side is the hypotenuse and the one at the bottom here is the adjacent okay so what I'm looking to use then is going to be my sine ratio because what I can say is the sine of 78 degrees equals the opposite which is x which is what I'm looking for divided by the hypotenuse which is the calculation I've worked out of 31.4255 so if I want my opposite to be the subject of my formula I just multiply sine 78 by 31.4255 and I get 30.738 which is the height of my flagpole and if I want to write that to two decimal places I would write that as 30.74 meters to two decimal places and that would be the answer to that particular question so sometimes with these you're going to get questions where you need to use not just the sign rule but also a ratio or something like that it's very similar actually to the next question where we've got to work out the area of the triangle well the area of the triangle you can either work out a half base times height or um, you can also use that the area is going to equal a half a b sine c and this is what they call an inclusive rule in order for us to do that what we need to know is two sides and the angle between the two sides so if I call this a then it means then that I've got 10.4 um, I've got an angle of 134 degrees and then I've got this value of A which I can put then straight into the area formula okay so what we need to do first is work out the value of A well what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, say that that case this angle which is big A here is actually going to be 20 degrees now the reason I know that is because there are 180 degrees in a triangle 134 plus 26 and take that away from 180 I'm going to get 20 degrees so therefore angle A or C as it is in the diagram is going to be 20 degrees so what I can write is A over sine A equals B over sine B and I appreciate there's lots of A's and B's floating around but try not to worry too much about that try to just focus on what it is that you're trying to find out which in this particular case is A which I'm going to say is over the sine of 20 which equals B which is going to be 10.4 over the sine of 26 degrees so therefore A which is uh, the length that I'm looking for is going to equal sine of 20 multiplied by 10.4 divided by the sine of 26 which means my value of a is going to be 8.1141507 I think that is okay so apologies is a fairly long number what I normally do in my calculator is I use the answer key so when I'm working out the area and I'm using a half a B sine C what I'll actually uh, put into my calculator is going to be a half um, a which we've just worked out is the answer and that little dot just means multiply B I've already got which is 10.4 and then the sine 
of 134 degrees. Okay, and when I put all of that into my calculator, what I get is 30.35152, and that's actually the area of the triangle, which is to a suitable degree of accuracy, uh, let's say two decimal places, going to be 30.35 centimeters squared, and that's to 2dp. OK, and that would be the answer to question number six. So we're about halfway through the video. This particular video is going to be a little bit more challenging. I wanted to try to give you uh, good examples of sign rule and how sign rule works out with these sorts of questions. OK, so let's move on then to question number seven. Work out the angle ABC. Now, this time it's an angle. OK, so ABC is actually going to be um this angle here um oh, i've got an a an a <laughs> okay and a c i'm so sorry that should actually be b okay so it's actually this angle that we're looking for i need to remember to change that on the worksheet okay so the way that i'm going to apply the formula this time is i'm actually going to say that this angle here is really angle a okay so uh, I'm going to change it and I'm going to say sine A over A equals sine B over B. Now, again, it's one of those skills that you need to develop to actually over uh, look past the angles that you've been given or the letters that you've been given and just use your own letters if you need to. OK, so therefore, I'm going to say that sine A, which is the angle I'm looking for, which is opposite to 8 which is going to be A, is equal to sine B, which I'm going to say is 37. And that's divided by 6 centimetres, which is the uh, side CB, or B as I've written it. OK, now the problem with this particular calculation is it's going to give us the sine value of A. So if I multiply both sides by 8, what I'm actually going to get is the sine of A. Well, I don't really want the sine. What I actually want is the value of the angle. So if I said 8 over or 8 multiplied by sine of 37 over 6, that would be fine, but it wouldn't really work for me because I need the angle. So therefore, on my scientific calculator, I can use the shift sine key, and that will give us sine to the minus 1. OK, and then I can feed in my information as 8 multiplied by sine of 37 over 6. Make sure you close your brackets appropriately. There might be a fair few brackets uh, knocking around in that particular one. But hopefully, if you're OK with using your calculator, you should get that's equal to 53.361. So therefore, angle A, B, C. Don't forget to always answer the question rather than just leave it as angle B because it might be a bit confusing. Is 53.4 and that's to 1 dp. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, so a little bit more complex in the way that we do things. All right, let's move on then to question number eight. And we're going to work out the size of angle X. Now, again, I'm just going to use my own designation. However, in this particular case, it's been made fairly easy for me because angle X is actually this uh, angle A. So that's perfect for me. Sine A over sine B over B. Plug in my information. I've got sine A over 14 is going to equal the sine of 47 over 17. So don't forget, I need to use my inverse trigonometry. So it's going to be sine to the power of minus 1. And that's going to be now 14 multiplied by the sine of 47 over 17. Close your brackets, otherwise you will get an error message. But this time, you should be able to get the angle of 37.034175, which is going to equal um, angle X is going to... Oh, I don't know what's happened there. Angle X is going to equal... X equals 37 degrees. 37.0 degrees, and that's to 3SF. 
Okay, and that would be the answer to that particular question. I'm sorry that the screen went a bit odd there. Okay, let's move on then to question number nine. So question number nine, again, we're going to work out the angle of X. Now, in this case, it's uh, corner C. I'm going to ignore that entirely. I'm going to say that sine A over A equals sine B over B. And that's going to be therefore the sine of x over 19 equals the sine of 87 over 22. Multiply both sides by 19, but use the inverse uh, trig function. That's going to be 19 multiplied by the sine of 87 over 22. Don't forget your brackets, okay? And that will give you 59.5931. So therefore, angle X equals 59.6 degrees, and that's to three significant figures. Okay, so hopefully we're getting on okay with these now. Let's move on then to question number 10. There's plenty of practice with these particular worksheets. We've got two more sort of theoretical questions, and then we're going to have a look at some word problems. Okay, so again, I'm not going to worry too much about it. I've been asked to calculate angle LMN, so I'm going to call it this angle, which I'll call it A. So therefore, sine of A over A equals the sine of B over B, so the sine of A or LMN or whatever it is you want to write over 7.5 equals the sine of 52 degrees, all divided by 6.7. And again, don't forget to use your inverse trig rule, okay, or inverse trig uh, button, 7.5 multiplied by the sine of 52 over 6.7, close off your brackets, you're going to get 61.8969. So to three significant figures, angle LMN is going to be equal to 61.9 degrees. And that would be the answer to question number 10. Okay, so hopefully those are okay for all of you from a theory point of view. We're just going to have a look at uh, one more. Now, this particular one is slightly different because it tells you uh, that the angle PQR is obtuse. Okay, so let's just be a little bit careful with that one. So this is uh, one that came up on an exam paper or something very similar to this came up. But either way, we're just going to do what we normally do. We're going to say the sine of A over A equals the sine of B over B. So the sine of A over 10.4 is going to equal the sine of 27, all divided by 6.2. So therefore, sine to the power of minus 1, multiplied by 10.4 times, again, bracket sine of 27 over 6.2, close your brackets each time. That's going to give you 49.599 degrees. OK, or if you like, 49.6 degrees. Okay, however, what we're told is the angle is obtuse, and this is very clearly an acute angle. So what you've got to remember is that the sine wave, um, if I just draw this out as a kind of little sketch for you, we've got something going on that looks like that. Okay, so the value of the sine is going to be at this point here, which is 49.6 degrees. And that would be this value of the sine over here. So it goes to 1 at the very top, and it goes to 0, and then minus 1 at the bottom there. OK, so in other words, we've got um, a sine graph which is symmetrical around 90 degrees. So this is 90 degrees. So what we're looking for as an obtuse angle is we need actually this angle over here. And it's this angle that we're looking for. So what I would do is I would say, well, actually, if I want um, to uh, look at the distance between 90 and 49.6, so in other words, this distance here is going to be 90 minus 49.6, which is going to equal to 40 
0.4. Okay. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that um, it's symmetrical around the 90 degrees line. So therefore, if this is 40.4, then I can add 40.4 to the 90 degrees and that will give me then the angle that I'm looking for. So the obtuse angle is going to equal 90 plus 40.4 and that's going to give us a final answer of 130.4 degrees and that would be the answer to that particular question. So a little bit more challenging to, uh, to work through, but hopefully it'll give you some idea of how difficult these questions can become sometimes. Okay, so let's move on then to the final two questions on this particular worksheet. Okay, so this one is just a lot of words, but actually the question itself is not too difficult once you sketch it out. So airplane A is flying directly towards an airport, which is 30 miles away. So here is A and this is 30 miles and this is the airport. Okay. All right. Then the pilot looks out of the window and sees airplane B, which is 50 degrees on his right. So here's airplane B and we've got this angle of 50 degrees. Okay. And airplane B is also flying directly to the airport. Okay, so they're both flying in this direction directly to the airport. Okay, the pilot of airplane B calculates that airplane A is 45 degrees on her left. Okay, so um, if what we're looking at is saying that um, when she looks out of the window that would be 45 degrees and then really it's a case of working out how far this length is which is the distance of airplane B from the airport. Okay so fairly straightforward use of sine rule is going to be uh, x over sine um, well, actually, it's the x of the sine of 50 is going to be equal to uh, 30 over the sine of 45 degrees. Therefore, x is going to equal to sine of 50 multiplied by, again, 30 over the sine of 45 degrees. Put that into your calculator and you get 32. Uh, 5005-1323 miles. Okay, so therefore the distance to the airport is going to be 32.5 miles and that's to one decimal place and that would be the answer to question number 12. Okay, let's have a look then at question number 13 which is the very last question on this particular uh, worksheet. A little bit more challenging again uh, again because we got to draw a diagram but Sean and Rohan are standing 400 metres on a straight are standing 400 metres apart on a straight horizontal road. They see a hot air balloon between them directly above the road. So what we've got if effectively is um, a road where they're 400 metres apart and here's Sean and here's Rohan and here's our hot air balloon. Okay, not a great sketch, but that's a hot air balloon. And the angle of elevation of the hot air balloon from Sean is actually going to be 62 degrees. And the angle of elevation from Rohan is actually going to be 78 degrees. And there's two parts of the question. The first one is working out the distance between Shaw and the balloon. Well, that should be fairly straightforward because, again, we can use the sine rule. Now, this time I'm dispensing with the A over sine A and B over B uh, sine B. But if I just... I just write it out directly, I'm going to get X, which is the distance. So X over the sine of 78 degrees is going to equal to uh, 400 over the sine. Now, it's actually going to be this angle at the very top. Now, this angle at the very top is actually going to be 40 degrees. Again, because there's 180 degrees in a triangle, 62 plus 78 is going to be 140. Take that away from 180. I'm going to get 40 degrees at the top. So it's not a great diagram, the one I've written, but it does allow me then to calculate 
um, the value of x. So x is going to equal to the sine of 78 multiplied by 400 all divided by the sine of 40. Okay, so therefore that distance is going to be 608.7 meters and that's to, in this particular case, one decimal place. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. Part B is slightly different because what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use the uh, ratio again. And you'll know in one of the earlier questions, we had a go at using the ratio. So we need to find the height of the balloon directly above the road. So if I draw another diagram, a right angle triangle diagram, this effectively is my balloon, which uh, is this one at the very top here. We've just worked out this hypotenuse length, which is going to be 608.7. And we know this angle is 62 degrees. And what we're looking for is actually the opposite, which is the height above the road. So we've got hypotenuse is long side and then adjacent is the end. Um, so therefore, I can use my ratios saw. So Ka toa. Now the ratio I'm going to choose is going to be the sine because I'm looking for the opposite. I've got the hypotenuse and I've also got the angle. So therefore I can write this as the sine of 62 degrees equals the opposite, which is the bit I'm looking for, divided by 608. 0.7. Now, if you want to be a little bit more accurate, you could just use the answer key on your calculator, and that will give you a, a full level of accuracy if you needed that. Okay, so therefore, if I want to work out the opposite, it's going to equal to sine of 62 multiplied by 608. 7, and that's going to give me 537.44, which is the opposite. So therefore, the height is going to be 537.4 meters. And again, that's the one decimal place. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, so I hope this particular uh, worksheet's been useful to you. It's gone on for a little while. Hi. OK, so I hope that was useful to you. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment and come back to you. Subscribe to the site. Um, share the video. I hope it's useful. Uh, you know. See you very soon.